Hey guys, Peter here to tell you about the Letters from Tomorrow's Rain, Ovedon, out April 19th on AOP Records. The album has 11 tracks, 54 minutes in length, and this is the band's second full-length studio record. They are an Israeli doom metal band. When it comes to the design of this record, I felt like this was an album that while having a, a path, while having a sense of direction, that sense of direction is not always clear, and the path is not always visible. It's a record that because of that feels at times slightly hectic and a little bit chaotic. You really have to work uh, and dig deep in order to find your best way uh, across this album, find the best way to navigate these 11 songs uh, and find some light at the end of the tunnel. It's not always going to be easy. It's not an easy record to digest, to process, to navigate through, but it's an album that definitely has a lot of quality in the individual songs that it puts together. And that's where this chaos, where this hectic nature of the album really comes through. I think it comes from two different elements. One of them is that individuality that each song has, something that I saw on the debut album, but it's even more pronounced on this record. And then the elements of the band themselves. This is a band that has always a lot of guest musicians on their tracks. And when you have a lot of guest musicians on songs, they're always going to bring their own DNA, they're always going to bring their own fingerprint, and that's going to make the songs really distinguish themselves from one another. So when you add that aspect of the band, the way they approach records, with an album that emphasizes more the uniquenesses of each and every single song, you have this perfect storm to create that sort of chaotic experience, uh, hiding the path and making it really hard to find for the listener that wants to enjoy the album from start to finish. I think the more you listen to the record, the less these nuances or, or, or these elements become uh, intrusive into your experience. But at first glance, when you first dive into the album, this record really takes some time for the listener to feel comfortable with it. Now, when it comes into the sound, uh, this is a record that while adding some new elements and while changing some elements from the previous album, it's not a complete departure from what we, where we saw uh, them do on their debut record. So I think they're continuing with the work that was done then, but they're just evolving like any other band. It would evolve over time. When you think about a debut album, there's all the time in the world to put a debut album together. To do a sophomore, not so much. You have shorter window of time in which you can create these songs, in which you can uh, work on them. So all of these things are gonna have an impact on developing the sound of the band and developing the sound that this album has. Like I said, I don't think it's completely detached, but it definitely offers some new, uh, uh, some new aromas. It offers some new textures, some some new sounds. Now, I felt like this album, sound-wise overall, is a little bit more uh, of an album that it showcases as much of the darkness from within as it does from the brightness from the outside. Uh, there's a little bit of sense of, of, of hope, but there's also a sense of, of being completely overwhelmed by everything that surrounds you, by your own life experiences and everything that's going on uh, around you. Uh, the debut record felt a little bit more of that. It felt a little bit more uh, that it was collapsing uh, on itself. This album, while having moments where the album really feels like it's collapsing on itself, it still finds ways of, of being a little bit brighter, being a little bit bigger, a record that has a slightly larger volume, uh, maybe a little bit more texture as well at times, and definitely more guitar focus. I feel like this is an album that sound-wise really lives off of the guitar sound, the nuances of that same guitar sound, and the overall uh, range of emotions that comes from the different attributes that the guitars give to this album. Either be going with an acoustic sound, either be going with a more melodic, uh, rock, gothic sound, or even bringing some more distortion in, uh, a slight fuzz to the experience, creating a little bit more uh, thickness to the way the guitars come across, and with that thickness definitely comes some heaviness. So it's an album that guitar-wise has a lot of life, has a lot of movement, it's very rich and the guitars really become the common, not the common denominator in terms of being equal across each and every single song, but the common denominator in terms of what drives the experience and which is the element that has the biggest impact on the overall sound experience. Another element that I really enjoyed uh, on this record was the bass. 
I felt like it popped quite a bit throughout the record. It's super noticeable, but not noticeable in a negative way. It's noticeable in a way that adds emotion, that adds a little bit more, uh, it, it adds a different type of, uh, of experience to the way the sound comes across. I think it helps define the atmosphere and the emotions in each and every single song. I thought the bass on this record, when it popped that much, it didn't it didn't really change the heaviness, it didn't add groove, it didn't do any of that. It just created a different type of atmosphere. It enhanced the darkness of some of the songs, but more often than not, it helped to define what the emotional experience of the tracks were all about. The drums are slightly more consistent uh, throughout the record, at least when you compare them to the guitar sound, but I always felt like the drums on this record were not there to be overpowering, even though they do have some power and they do have some heaviness, but they're there more for depth and width. They definitely increase the size of these songs, they stretch out the songs, or at least give the songs a much larger footprint for them to work on, which also helps with the whole volume and size of the record overall. So I felt like the drums in a very, uh, in a very simple way, definitely impacted the record from that perspective. Uh, not in the forefront, more in the background, more as a passenger on this journey, on this ride, helping define or at least helping clear the path for those guitars to be a little bit more eclectic and add that richness to the overall sound experience. Now, as far as the vocals are concerned uh, and guests, I mean, there's quite a few guests on this album, not just guest vocalists, uh, guest musicians in general, like Michael Denner from King Diamond, Merciful Fate, Attila of Mayhem. Uh, there's a wide variety of voices and musicians that definitely add, like I said before, their own unique fingerprint to what this record sounds and feels like. And this is nothing new. This is really the DNA of the band that they set up on their debut album. So I was expecting them to continue, and that's exactly what they did. And it, it, it becomes part, uh, part and parcel of what tomorrow's reign uh, is all about. But I also really enjoyed uh, Ishai's uh, vocals. He has a great delivery, he has a great voice. He felt more connected on this record than on the previous album. Definitely more emotionally driven uh, and definitely more emotional in terms of how he, he uses his voice to convey the lyrics, the message, but more so the emotion that's represented in the sound of the songs. I, I think this is an album that is definitely a lot more personal to him, not that the previous one wasn't, but this one is a little bit more personal to him and he couldn't hide it. That really came across in his delivery and that has a very unique impact on how these songs uh, come about. It's a record that overall, like I said, has a lot of individuality within it, but it really struggles to define itself in terms of what it wants to be from a sonic standpoint. I think it's a lot easier to find your path through it uh, vocally, it's a lot easier to find your path through it lyrically, but sonically this album really has this deep individualistic experience in it and that, like I said, hurts define what the overall big picture was all about. Now, as far as favorite songs are concerned, uh, I want to start off with Room 124. I love the opening riff on this track, and then it moves into a more uh, methodic guitar sound that starts to drive the experience of the track. Then you have the harsh vocals coming in with some grit, uh, and that impact the song, creating really the backbone of what the entire track is all, ab all about, which is uh, this great vocal performance with a lot of heaviness in it, uh, a lot of pain, a lot of grit, a lot of emotion coming through, and also uh, that guitar sound that uh, emphasizes those same emotions that are represented in the lyric in the vocal performance. Now, it's a track that has this mist of heaviness uh, throughout that never really disappears outside of a little pocket within the song where there's a little bit more clarity. It almost like uh, the light, a very thin light at the end of the tunnel opens up before that same light, that same dim light becoming completely engulfed again in the overall darkness that this track offers, both musically and vocally. Uh, another track that I really enjoyed was Burning Times featuring Jan Lubitsky of Depressive Age. Uh, the bass sound on this song is outstanding, really pops. Uh, and it has a, a, a very nice impact, not just in the sound of the song, but in the mood that that same sound creates for the track. The vocals uh, feel hopeful at time, 
but they also offer a little bit of a dark embrace. The vocals on this track really have this ability to create two very different experiences depending on the range, on the tone, clean vocals, harsh vocals. The duality of the vocals on this track are really important in order to define that movement between light and darkness that's constantly battling one another throughout the entire track from beginning to end. Uh, the guitars on this song are the ones that in my opinion best transmit the emotional baggage that the track has, more so than that dynamic between the two styles of vocals. Last but definitely not least, Turn Around featuring Michael Denner of King Diamond Merciful Fate. Uh, very guitar focused track as you would expect coming in considering the style, considering the song, considering who's on it. Uh, it's a track that has a very powerful and rich guitar sound from beginning all the way to the end. Very melodic, uh, very driven, a song that has this uh, goth rock vibe at times and then also increases in, into a more heavier sound but it never really becomes overly heavy. It's, it always has this melodic undertone throughout and that becomes the backbone of the track and that backbone is really uh, on the back, if you will, of the overall guitar performance that takes, uh, that takes control of this track, offering a lot of diversity, offering a lot of texture, and then definitely being the element that uh, surpasses all others and becomes the focus of the listener's attention from beginning all the way to the end, exactly what you would expect from this song, and that's exactly what the song delivers. This is it, Tomorrow's Rain with Ovden, out once again on April 19th on AOP Records. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles, hit me up in the comment section, and I'll see you all at the next video. Take care, guys.